I've had a lot of odd jobs while in the city, and uh, one of them was as a tutor, but not for high schoolers like you think. I tutored five-year-olds because this is a huge business in New York City, because rich New York City parents just like don't understand the concept of children. <laughs> you know? They're always like, thank God you're here. He's so small. <laughs> I bought him a pantsuit and he falls right through. <laughs> and he's not answering any of my emails. So we come in and teach him like counting and basic shapes. And you're probably wondering, how do you get a five-year-old to sit through a tutoring session? Well, my tutoring company figured it out. You trick them into doing it by never calling us tutors and only calling us friends. In fact, when we came over, the parent had to say, it's playtime, your friend is here. And that's how we got the kids to learn their shapes. The only downside is those kids hate friendship now. <laughs> you wanna be my friend? No thanks, I got enough worksheets. <laughs> I think as women, we're very concerned with aging and that's just because society makes us feel that we have to be. Uh, so we buy all these creams and makeup to hide the sides of aging uh, and none of it works. At least that's what I thought until I saw a woman on the train recently wearing her makeup in a way that I was like, okay, you have figured it out. <laughs> See, we as women paint our face on where our face actually is. <laughs> what we should be doing is what this woman was doing, was painting her face a little above her face. <laughs> your lipstick should start where your nostril is. <laughs> Eyeshadow, take it to the hairline. <laughs> and it worked. I had no idea how old she was or where she was looking. <laughs> she could have been 87, she could have been no older than a 27 year old Picasso painting. <laughs> maybe she's born with it, maybe she invented cubism. And as I was admiring her, the car stopped, the train conductor voice came on and he was like, ladies and gentlemen, sorry for the delay, we'll be moving shortly. And she very loudly goes, oh, come on, I have somewhere to be. <laughs> I was like, of all the people in this train car, I would not have expected you to be beholden to the constructs of time. <laughs> you look like you get your clocks from Salvador Dali paintings. <laughs> And at that moment, a group of teens with a boombox came into the car and they were about to hit play and one of them clocked eyes with her and then turned around to the, the rest of the group and went, yeah. <laughs> and at that moment, I knew exactly what he was thinking. There is no point for showtime. The show is already here. <laughs> I, um, I love going on first dates. I think they're so fun. But there's always this thought in the back of my mind, which is, what if he's a murderer, right? <laughs> is this the man of my dreams or the one who puts me to sleep forever? <laughs> right? Which is why I have developed a strategy called leaving breadcrumbs for the police. <laughs> I'll share it with you now, okay? So as soon as you get your meal, take a photo, post it with a caption, having a great time, name of Cross Streets, timestamp. <laughs> then you have to have a memorable conversation with the bartender so that way if the police show up the next day he's like yeah I do remember her she asked if I could put a half pound of lettuce in her bloody mary <laughs> end of the night is the trickiest part because if you want to hook up with this person you're like again what if they're murder I can't go back to their place that could be a murder trap, right? So you think, okay, I'll go back to my place. I know that's not a murder trap. Surprise, now he knows where you live. He can come back and murder you later. <laughs> Which is why I have come up with a solution. I think we as women and men, anyone who's scared, okay, we should pool our money together and invest in one dummy apartment. <laughs> Working title, Air P in V. Or fuckhole, both are cute. Right? And it's built for both sex and safety. Right? So when you show up, there's a bowl full of condoms. Also, only you know where the knives are. Right? It's decorating karate trophies so he doesn't try anything. But if he does, there's a lever that releases a bear. 
Not a grizzly bear, but like a burly homosexual man who will wrestle him into submission. 